In this video, we'll address the safety first ratio and shortfall risk. Both can be used to compare and rank portfolios when an investor gives you a minimum acceptable return, their threshold, if you will. The safety first ratio, very similar to the sharp ratio. It measures excess return divided by risk as measured by the standard deviation of returns. But whereas the sharp ratio measures excess return over the risk free rate, the safety first ratio measures excess return over that minimum acceptable return specified by the investor. Note that if the minimum acceptable return given was the risk free rate, then your safety first ratio is just the sharp ratio. Now, dividing the excess return by the standard deviation means the safety first ratio we calculate is effectively a number of standard deviations. To illustrate, let's put some numbers in there for two portfolios. Imagine an investor with a minimum acceptable return of 4%. That investor is deciding between a portfolio of US equities, which we'll call portfolio one, and a portfolio of European equities, portfolio two. To calculate the safety first ratio, we just need the expected returns and the standard deviations of each portfolio. For portfolio one, we'll get an excess return of 10% minus 4%, which is 6%, and divide that by the standard deviation of 15% to get a safety first ratio of 0.4. For portfolio two, we have 7.5% minus 4%, an excess return of 3.5%, divided by 5%, resulting in a safety first ratio of 0 0.7, higher than that for portfolio one. So how do we interpret that? Well, let's go back to the start of the calculation. First of all, we took the excess return. For portfolio one, that was 6%, and for portfolio two, only 3.5%. Based on excess returns alone, we might therefore suggest that portfolio one is the better option. It has the higher excess return. However, this ignores the difference in risk between the two portfolios. Although portfolio one is expected to deliver 6% more than the minimum, it does so with a higher risk, a standard deviation of 15%, as opposed to only 5% for portfolio two. That means returns are much more volatile for portfolio one. The higher standard deviation tells us on average, its returns are 15% away from the mean compared to only 5% on average for portfolio two. This has a huge impact on the likelihood of the return falling below the minimum acceptable level. So dividing the excess return by the standard deviation accounts for the differences in risk. It takes the excess return and turns it into a number of standard deviations. The resulting ratio tells us how many standard deviations above the minimum acceptable return our portfolio's expected return is. As we want as much of a cushion as possible between the two, we want the safety first ratio to be as high as possible. The bigger, the better. In this case, the safety first ratio would rank portfolio two with a safety first ratio of 0.7 above portfolio one with its ratio of only 0.4. Portfolio two's expected return is 0.7 standard deviations above the minimum threshold, whereas portfolio one's is only a meager 0.4. But we can go further than just simply ranking the portfolios with the safety first ratio. With the addition of a simple assumption, we can also easily calculate the risk of each portfolio's return falling below the minimum threshold. That assumption we need is that the portfolio returns are normally distributed. If that were the case, then the ratios we've just calculated can be expressed 
as Z values. Remember, we said the safety first ratio told us how many standard deviations away from the expected return our minimum acceptable return is. A Z value does pretty much the same thing. It tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean any observation is for a normal distribution. So taking portfolio one, the safety first ratio tells us that the minimum acceptable return is 0.4 standard deviations below the mean. So we can express this, assuming normality, as a Z value of minus 0.4. Z values for observations below the mean are always negative. Now, to find the risk of the return falling below the minimum acceptable return, all we need to do is calculate the percentage of the normal distribution that lies below the Z value of minus 0.4. How do we do that? Z tables. Using this extract from a Z table, we can easily calculate the area below a Z of minus 0.4. Now, this Z table only gives us positive Z values. So first of all, let's look up a value for a Z of plus 0.4. We can see that is going to be 0.6554. That tells us that 65.54% of the distribution is below the Z value of plus 0.4. That must mean that 1 minus 0.6554, which is 34.46%, is above a Z value of plus 0.4. And via the gift of symmetry, the normal distribution we know is symmetrical, that also means that 34.46% is below a Z value of minus 0.4. Hence, for portfolio one, the risk of returns falling below the minimum acceptable return, or shortfall risk as we call it, is 34.46%. Let's go on and work it out for portfolio two. Given a safety first ratio of 0 0.7, let's use the table to look up a value for a Z of plus 0.7. That will give us 0 0.758, 1 minus 0 0.758 is 0 0.242. So we can say that shortfall risk for portfolio 2 is 24.2%. As we would like the smallest risk of falling below the minimum acceptable return, a lower shortfall risk is preferable. Hence, once again, this measure favours portfolio 2, 24.2% shortfall risk instead of 34.46%. The decision is consistent with the one we made based on the safety first ratio, and that will always be the case. A higher safety first ratio, which we prefer, will always lead to a lower shortfall risk, which we also prefer. So to summarise, both the safety first ratio and shortfall risk use the risk and excess return of portfolios to compare and rank them. The safety first ratio is a measure of how far above the minimum acceptable return the expected return on a portfolio is. The bigger the safety first ratio, the bigger the cushion between the expected and minimum return. For the safety first ratio, bigger is better. Shortfall risk measures the probability of the portfolio's return falling below the minimum acceptable level. The smaller the probability, and hence the smaller the shortfall risk, the better. 